There were a lot of things that shook the markets up last week. China reported its lowest GDP number since 1992. The EU put Amazon in its crosshairs over antitrust practices. The White House said there could be more tariffs on China. And Facebook spent several days explaining to Washington how cryptocurrencies work which deserves an in-focus to itself. Any one of these headlines could have moved the market significantly for the week, but none of them did. Netflix reported earnings last Wednesday evening and reported a big miss, and that news moved the markets for several days. This is a Silver Report In Focus, where we take a look at a company, companies, or markets that made Wall Street's news cycle to determine sentiment and decide whether we should be buying, avoiding, or holding. This week, we bring Netflix in focus. Netflix reported revenue of $4.9 billion and earnings per share of 60 cents for Q2 2019. Revenue was in line with analyst estimates and EPS was four cents better than expected. The number that hurt Netflix Netflix with subscriber growth. Netflix and Wall Street were expecting 5 million new subscribers in Q2 2019. The company reported that it grew subscribers by 2.7 million, a number that was way off of estimates. Also, Netflix lost around 130,000 subscribers during the quarter. Blip or trend? The Netflix earnings call at this particular time is scary for Netflix bulls. Two or three years ago, this earnings call wouldn't have meant much. There would have been some sell-off, but investors would have swooped in, bought the stock up at what would be considered bargain prices, driving the stock price back up. So what's the difference between several years ago and now? Competition. Netflix has been able to operate unchecked ever since they pushed Blockbuster out of the pain. Now, however, everyone's entering the streaming business. The question of blip or trend is the question that investors are attempting to find an answer to. Will Netflix continue to lose subscribers to other streaming services as they become available? Or will Netflix plow ahead using its original content to keep current subscribers locked in and new subscribers signing up? The streaming wars are heating up. Disney Plus, Warner Media, and NBC Universal will all be pressing to gain subscribers as their services come online. Not to mention Hulu and HBO who already have up and running services. There will be some losers in this war, but I don't believe Netflix will be on the losing side. The way investors sold Netflix stock last week, it would lead you to believe that the entire quarter was bad. There were some bright spots during the quarter. Revenue grew by 26%. Operating margin was up 250 basis points, and Netflix ended the quarter with 151.5 million paid subscribers, which represents year-over-year -year growth of 21.9%. After the sell-off, the stock price of Netflix is at an interesting level. At this level, the stock found resistance back in March of 2018, and then found support shortly in August of 2018. Below this level, there's a level of support around the $270 price area, and below that, the $240 price area. The question is, where do bulls, assuming that there are some left, place their buy orders? At the 315 level, at the 270 level, or at the $240 level? When it comes to Netflix after this sell-off, I'm going to follow Uncle Warren and be greedy when others are fearful. The closer to 300 the stock price gets, the greedier I'll be. I've written before, I believe Netflix wins the streaming wars. I think their spending on new content will pay off. It will bring new subscribers to the platform. They seem to be taking a slow and long-term approach to the India market, something I didn't discuss in this article, but it's an approach I favor. I think this current earnings fallout is a blip in the overall Netflix growth story. They've had blips before, they've recovered. Also at the current price level, it's a good place to put a toe in the water. Did I consider the competition in my buy analysis? Yes, I did. But the competition are old school companies with old school boards driven by an old school Wall Street way of thinking. It wouldn't surprise me if Warner Media and or NBC Universal offers a streaming service just for television content at one price with an additional charge for access to movie content. It also wouldn't surprise me if these new streaming services offer multiple tiers of service, like no advertisement, a light amount of advertisement, and or a standard advertisement package. I see these companies attempting to extract every dollar they can from subscribers and not really creating a unique viewing experience for their subscribers. And I believe that's what separates the winners from the losers in the streaming wars, but we'll see. Netflix is a buy, a speculative, scary buy, but a buy nonetheless. This is where I leave you with a buy on Netflix. Thanks again for checking out this week's In Focus. Just a postscript on the streaming award. My thought if consumers attempt to pay monthly subscription fees for multiple streaming services, they're going to end up with something that looks like their old cable bill, which I think will lead to some hard decisions, like which services do I watch the most and which services should I cancel. This is when and where we'll start to see companies take losses on their streaming services.